if we put together every player who was part of this almost Ravens team, they'd be undefeatable. Nobody would be able to stop them at all. They would never lose a game. We would literally win the Super Bowl every single year. But anyway, Jack Settlement. And Marlon Humphrey, of course, they do the Punchline Podcast. And special shout-out to Jack Settlement. We will be part of his Punchline Podcast tailgate party coming up for the Ravens and Bengals Thursday night football game. Looking forward to being back in the bank. I ain't been there in a very, very long time. But looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. I know it's going to be cold, so got to get ready for that. But anyway, if you want to be part of that tailgate, uh, the link down below it will be in the description. You can use code ENGRAVEN to get $5 off of your tickets. But anyway... Jack Settlement was talking to Marlon Humphrey on this week's episode of the Punchline Podcast. And Marlon Humphrey, he confirmed a rumor that we had heard a couple different times. We heard some different angles of it and whatnot. But the rumor was that Derrick Henry was almost a raven. And when people heard that, I know it broke a lot of hearts. I know it caused a lot of pain to people. But Marlon Humphrey, he confirmed that that was true. And you know what? Let's listen to what Marlon Humphrey and Jack Settlement had to say. Before we get to the game on Sunday... The last time we recorded was before the trade deadline. Trade deadline has passed. Ravens make no moves. What did you hear, though? Down Guys, I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I'm just going to be completely honest with you. I'm being completely honest with you. And being that it didn't happen, it doesn't really matter. I was sitting here minding my business. Hey, I was minding my business. Like, I was doing no wrong. I got to text somebody who was going to be suiting up in purple and... Uh, they ran the football. Mm. I got a text that somebody was going to walk into Baltimore, Maryland. It was about a height of probably about 6'4". I got a text that there was a very high chance that a guy that usually goes by King was going to be in purple and black in m and Bank Stadium very soon. You think LeBron would be a good tight end? Hey, uh, LeBron was. <laughs> hey, LeBron was coming to the Ravens. That's all I'm gonna say. No, seriously, I, 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 I was about eighty five percent that King Cameron would be suiting up for the Ravens. Mm. It, uh, it did not happen. My source was incorrect. My source was incorrect, and uh, but he had me thinking it was gonna it was a done data. Yeah. He had me thinking it was basically a done deal. The text you got. But did you ever reach out to your good friend, old compatriot? So, I did. You did? I did. Whoa. I did. And he, he didn't give me any de- <laughs> didn't give me any details. <laughs> so, he didn't give me any details. I was a little disappointed in that. But I uh, should have, would have, could have. But anyway, do we need another running back? No, sir. Other than that, back to trades. Other than that, I didn't. The, the uh, Chase Young did surprise me. Mm-hmm. That was also a possible Raven. That was, do, you, do you hear any sources on that? Oh no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't hear about him coming out. Shoot, do we even need another pass rush? Shoot, hey, we're looking all right. <laughs> I think. Shoot, Montez Sweat. Who else was another surprise? Josh Dobbs got traded. We'll talk about him later. Dobbs. No man, I that was that was. I had one source. Eighty five percent sure the King was coming to Baltimore. Wow. But uh, don't need him. Don't, hey, we got who we got. We got Don't who we need got. Him. got who so, we got. there we go. Yet again, uh, an, another one bites the dust. Derrick Henry, Marlon Humphrey said he was 85% sure Derrick Henry was going to be a Baltimore Raven. Got the text from his guy saying, oh, yeah, it's going down. It's happening. Then, for whatever reason, again, we heard from Cole that uh, the, the, the Titans ownership, they vetoed the trade. But then there was somebody in Titans media said, no, that wasn't true. But whatever happened, it, the bottom line is that it didn't happen. It did not go down. But something that uh, they said, Marlon Humphrey said at the very end of just everything that he was talking about with how Derrick Henry was almost with the Baltimore Ravens, he said, do we even need him? No, we, we, we don't need a running back. Because look, and this was, of course, after Keaton Mitchell did what he did, uh, after Gus Edwards have been doing what he's been doing, and even what Justice Hill's been doing a lot of times too. I call Justice Hill scissors because he makes so many cuts. Um, and then once him and Lamar Jackson, once they work out that whole mesh point thing, then we'll be in some great shape. But anyway, um, it did obviously work out for the Baltimore Ravens uh, with them not ending up trading for uh, a running back. And with Keith Mitchell, I- I'm-, I'm super excited about him, uh, especially because he is that home run hitter. I know my guy uh, Sutton Def from uh, Purple Rain Podcast, he has continued to bring this up that the Ravens really need a home run hitter at running back. Oh, trust me, they got one. 
Uh, but with, with Keaton Mitchell, the most dangerous part about him is that while he's a speed back, uh, he be breaking tackles too. Because if you watch the runs that he got, especially the big runs that he got, he was always breaking off of somebody. So that makes him that much more dangerous. But anyway, um, it did work out for him the most of all. And I said this before that I feel like uh, there were some Ravens that were very happy that they didn't make a trade for anybody at the deadline. And those Ravens were Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, uh, and then, of course, Keaton Mitchell. Because I feel like Gus, he would have still got his had they traded for Derrick Henry. Uh, Justice Hill even would have got his. It would have been a little bit less, but he would have still got some burn if they traded for Derrick Henry. But Keaton Mitchell, he would not have gotten anything. Uh, because the carries would have went to Gus Edwards and the guy that they just gave up some draft picks to trade for. And then, of course, uh, Justice Hill as well. I don't feel like Keaton Mitchell would have been part of the mix. But anyway, it does not stop there because this almost Ravens team, uh, while they uh, they almost got a Derrick Henry, apparently Derrick Henry wasn't the only guy that they called around about. Because um, Jeff Zrebic, he did tell us about how the Ravens, they called the Washington Commanders about Chase Young. And they they had something in place with that, too. But they he said they just couldn't do enough to get it over the hump. They didn't do enough to get it through. So Chase Young was another one. But it, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> it does not stop there because the Baltimore Ravens were also one of multiple teams that called about Panthers pass Russia. Brian Burns, you know, you know, what's crazy. Some people think that the Baltimore Ravens don't be listening to stuff like this, whether it be videos like this or other people's videos or whatnot. They don't, be li- they don't be having their ears to the streets or whatnot, but they do. They do because literally everybody, everybody who Ravens fans suggest, well, minus Daniel Hunter, well, who knows? Maybe the Ravens called on him too, but everybody that the Baltimore Ravens fans suggested they should trade for, Well, maybe not everybody, because, you know, we'd be asking for everybody and everything. But a lot of people that the Baltimore Ravens fans suggested that they trade for, they called in on them. And apparently they tried to, because they tried to trade for Derrick Henry. They tried to make it happen, and it almost made it happen. They tried to trade for Chase Young, but, again, I guess whatever compensation they were willing to give up, the Washington Commanders were like, oh, no, no thanks. Or maybe the the, the Ravens were like, you know what, we're not willing to give up X because we only want to give up Y. And the commanders were like, you know what, we want X, Y, Z. Who, who knows what what happened to where it didn't get pushed through. Uh, but then, yeah, with Brian Burns, too, they, they called in on him as well. Uh, and that obviously didn't go through as well. And we didn't hear anything about it almost going through, but Ravens did make an attempt. So I do like that. I, I do like that sort of aggressive approach. Um, you know me. I wish it would have been a little more aggressive so they could have gotten the deal done, especially uh, at the pass rush position because, again, I, I love how it was it, it was explained by somebody on Glenn Clark Radio that um, the Ravens, if they got like a significant pass rusher, then they would be able to do less scheming of blitzing and they would just be able to – Get a pass rush with just sending four, sending four, sending five, whatnot. You, you could do less blitzing and whatnot. So that could make everybody's job easier, make Mike McDonald's job easier. And now, of course, he's still going to blitz here and there now. But he will be able to do it less and have more people drop back covering and whatnot. But, again, you still do want to get pressure. You want to bring pressure from all sorts of ways and whatnot. But that would have been fun. But like we have continued to say. Uh, Even though the Baltimore Ravens didn't trade for anybody, even though they didn't acquire anybody, even though they didn't bring anybody on, they are still a team that does have a legitimate shot to be Super Bowl contenders. They have everything that they need and more. And Marlon Humphrey talked about it, too. And I know he he is a player that's on the team. So, I mean, what are you really going to say? Are you going to say, oh, man, we need this or we need that? I don't think he would say that. But he did mention how, like, what, what do we even need? Like, we're good. We, we, we got a nice roster. And they actually do. That is true. Uh, because they have strong depth. At a lot of different positions. And again, they still got some guys that could be on the way back, possibly. Uh, with David Ajabo, I don't think it's looking good for him. Tyus Bowser, I, don't, I honestly don't even think it's looking good for him. But we'll see. We, we still just do not know about those two. Uh, Marcus Williams. Um, I think he'll probably practice this week, and I think he'll play in the game against the Browns this week. Uh, so Ravens are still they still getting a bit stronger. Morgan Moses, they didn't have him last week. I think he'll be back against the Browns this week. Too. This, this is just my opinion. I ain't hear nothing from nothing. Y'all know I'm an NFL outsider. No plugs, no sources, no none of that, no contacts, none of that. Uh, but those are just my opinions on guys that I think will come back 
uh, this week. But should be fun. As always, you know how it is with the Baltimore Ravens. They keep us on our toes. But this is some information that I know it kind of hurts to know, kind of hurts to rehash. I know the trade deadline was last week, but it's just confirming everything that we figured was true, heard was true. But Marlon Humphrey just, yeah, just put the icing on the cake that this trade was real.